Hey crafty family, it's me, and today we're going to do something so much fun, it's going to kill you, it's going to be so awesome. We are going to make our own doilies. Check that out. There's doilies. I've got butterflies. I've got butterfly wings. And I've got another doily. You're probably wondering, well, how do we make our own of these? And it's not a die. It's not a Spellbinders die or a die cut in any way. It is silicone molds. Flippity floppity silicone molds. And caulking. You know, the kind of caulking you use to caulk your tub, your toilet, you know, all that good stuff. That is what we're going to use in the molds to make these fabulous things. Now, um, I've done it with modeling paste before, but it comes out a little bit too hard. And, and the flexible modeling paste is a little better, but these are like really flexible because silicone, it, it has silicone and um, acrylic latex. And it has to have that because it can't just be pure silicone because the mold is silicone. Okay, because you have to use a silicone mold. So if the mold is silicone and you use silicone caulk, hold on. I dropped this on the floor. Um, and you use silicone caulk, it's just going to stick to this and you're never going to get it out. It'll permanently be over with. So you have to use a caulk that you can use a latex, um, acrylic latex, you know, uh, but if it has silicone in it, that's what makes it flexible. So it's okay to have silicone in it, but it cannot be just pure silicone. It has to be the acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. So this is the Alex Plus stuff. It's only a couple bucks at Walmart. Um, you can get it where it has a spray nozzle where you just go psh, psh, like you would um, whipped cream. But they didn't have that one today. So I just got this one and stupidly it doesn't come with a cap. So once you cut it to use it, you got to put something over it, unfortunately. Um, and I'm a plumber's daughter. So caulking is something I know a little bit something about. Because my dad owned a plumbing business and I've done a lot of caulking in my life and I still do because if my client has a tub that has moldy caulk, I'll offer to uh, replace it for them. So I've got these molds for doilies and they're very delicate and beautiful like this one. Um, and I screwed up the first time I did this one because I didn't put it thick enough in the center here and this part here separated from that. Um, but that looks like a little cog, so I wasn't too upset about it because I got a little piece I can use on something. Um, but this time I'll do a better job of making sure it's thick because that's what you want to do. I also have these molds. I have a bunch of them. You can um, fill the molds with caulk and make things with them. And I don't know what happened to my butterfly because it was up here. Um, hold on a spill. Well... I don't know what happened to it. It must have fallen somewhere. But I made a butterfly already and I lost it already. <laughs> Figures. Um, but this is the, also the butterfly one from here. But I also made a butterfly out of one of these. And I don't know what the heck happened to it. I was going to show it to you. But I'm going to show you how to do this process. Because you will love it. Because then you will always have your own doilies that are very flexible like fabric for your journals or for embellishing cards. And you can also color this as well, which I will show you how to do that also. Um, I'll do some colored butterflies, but I just, but you can paint these afterwards. So you don't have to, you know, but sometimes painting them is a little difficult because you got to get in all the nicks and crandies. So I can show you how to color these, how to color the caulk. But let's start with just making the white, um, the white doilies. What you're going to need is your caulk. Like I said, make sure it is acrylic silicone, acrylic with silicone in it. And what I do is you can, and, and I, I learned this from Lolly Palooza, who learned it from another woman on YouTube. I'll put the video to both of their videos um, in the description so you can check them out. Um, so anyway, you're going to take some of your caulk on the back of your palette knife. So if that's how you're holding your palette knife, that is the back. That is how you use it. And you just start pushing it in. Now the trick here is to get the silicone pretty much, you know, go over the whole mold. And 
as you put it on and you turn it on its side, you put it on and then you turn it at an angle and you scrape it. And that puts it back on there and it kind of cleans up your mess as you go along, okay? So you're gonna take it, you're gonna put it on and then you're going to scrape it, okay? And don't put a whole bunch of the caulk out at once because you don't want to waste it because, you know, in my case, I cannot get it back into the container. So right now, the first thing you're going to do is just work on getting it into all the grooves so that they all look white. Okay, and I'll show you what you do after that. So just work on doing that. Put more out as needed. And you don't want to work with any more than, you know, a small amount at first. Okay, now as you see, there is no what looks like space. However, this is not done yet, okay? Don't just do that and walk away from it because I guarantee you, you did not get that caulk down into the grooves of this thing. So now what you want to do with the caulk on your thing is move your finger up your palette knife. I want you to put some pressure on that in areas and then wipe back put pressure you're working it in that's what your job is right now you're going to go around with the caulking and you're going to work it in okay you're just going to keep working it and pushing it down and as you notice there's less and less caulk on this knife because as i'm pushing it down and you're going to push pretty hard you're going to, I mean, because my, my palette knife is bending. I am pushing pretty hard. You're not going to hurt your mold. But you want to make sure it gets down in there. Because otherwise, you are going to have a thin and likely fall apart doily or whatever you're, um, whatever you're doing. It's going to be so thin because you're not going to be able, and you can twist it and turn it. And another good thing to do, drop it flat a few times. That helps it settle as well. Just don't drop it so it's like flipping all over the place. Dropping it a few times will help settle it. And then go around and keep going around and scraping and pushing. I almost have none left on here because I've been, you know, it's been filling in. So once you've gone around a couple times don't worry about whether it's too messy um, right now. You know, don't, don't worry about that. It's fine. I will show you how to fix all of that later. Now what you're going to do is scrape off a lot of the excess so that you can see your mold pretty clearly. Okay. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to reposition it on my knife for getting into areas so it's not so spread out on my knife. Keep a towel or a baby wipe nearby. Now you're gonna look closely at your mold, okay? And I'll see if I can see a spot, because it's kind of hard. You're gonna look for little pits, all right? Let's see if you could see where the tip of my palette knife is, that little pitting right there. You're gonna wanna go around and fill in any little areas that look like they have a little pit in them. And that's from an air bubble from when we were pushing and from when we were dropping it. Little air bubbles are gonna form, not even air bubbles, they're not like bubbles. They basically are just little pits from where the air came out. So you're just gonna wanna look around and fill that in just so it's smooth on the back. It's not really gonna be a big deal, but you just wanna make sure it's, you know, here's some there. You just wanna go and you don't wanna push too hard at this point because you've already done your pushing. So now you're just going around looking to fill in any little pitting that you might see. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's worth it. Okay, so that's good, it's done. So now we're gonna move on to this one. This one's a bit more flexible. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I just noticed that it's a little bit harder to work with, in my opinion. I like the bit firmer ones than these, where it's like really flexible. Uh, hold on. I just, I don't know. I think these ones, 
make it easier for you it, it's easier to get it out but it it's easier to form those little pits because if you move it at all it slides away from the thing I don't know it's just my opinion okay so we need some more so first you're just gonna go around and get it all just white you know get all the caulking in there Okay, and once you got it all like that and you wipe it back, now you're going to do your pushing. You go around, you move it. See, and with these flop flimsy ones, it's harder because if you push too much, it doesn't really, you know, you got to be careful how much you push on these a little bit more because it squeezes out like the other ends. It's hard to explain. So this you want to push. But if it's a real flippy floppy one, you don't have to push too, too hard. Just go over it a few times. You don't have to push as hard on these. But you want to push and, you know, decently and go around, especially on the edges where it's really thin. And like for me in the center, I want to make sure I have a nice thick layer in the center because that's where I had issues with this one. So you just want to make sure you get... Good coverage that's all it's not that hard. it's not really hard or anything it's not hard to do this so don't be intimidated because it's caulking and it's something that plumbers use I know a lot of people would think oh I can't do that you know it's not hard at all okay so I've done that so now I'm going to again reposition it on my palette knife I'm gonna look for the pitting again I'm just gonna clear some of this away and there's some there see because it it gets thin easily on this type of mold for some reason. So I can't wipe as much back because of that. Um, you have to be careful because it's so flexible that even when you're going across it with your palette knife, it'll sink in and dig some of it out. Um, that's why I don't like the really floppy ones as compared to the more firm ones like this. You want to do it on a, a very, very, very flat surface like a piece of glass, which is why I have this. That'll help. You definitely don't want to do it on a soft surface of any kind. Okay, good enough. I will take care of the film on it later. Okay. So this one's flippy floppy too, but because it was a smaller one, it was slightly easier to do. So, you don't want to leave it this caulk set out for too long because it does start to harden pretty quickly. I mean, it's not going to harden for a while, but it starts to kind of set up and get annoying to work with after about 10 minutes, 8 minutes. So, I'm just going to do the two big butterflies on this. Because the annoying thing about this is, I thought the wings were going to be able to be used as wings on something, but they're both facing the same flipping way. So that really doesn't help. <laughs> there should have been one facing one way and one facing the other. And you'd think, oh, well, just turn one over. But the back side of these is not as nice as the front side. So it kind of looks funny. So... I was not happy about that. Definitely not happy about that. See, that was much easier to do than, and that's starting to get hard, so I'm going to take a baby wipe and clear that off and get myself fresh caulking. Okay, and then I will dry that little area, put enough, to, well, I'll just put it on here, since I'm just doing the butterfly. But yeah, this is fun, it's very easy to do, um, 
you can get a bunch of these molds and just do a crap load of them and by the next day by the next day you'll have you know a bunch of pretties to play with oh I was gonna paint one for you well I'll do the wings and I'll paint it because I forgot so I'm going to add a little bit to this and it's so cheap I mean literally it's like under three dollars this whole tube and this whole tube will probably do 50 of those doilies so let's say I wanted it to be let's even do metallic purple I wonder how the metallic will do I'm just putting literally I put a drop in there and that might even be too much and but we'll experiment and find out it's I'm pretty sure that might be too much but let's see it's gonna give it a pearlescent kind of um, look to it when it dries it's not gonna be full-on metallic because it's you know I only put a drop in comparison to all the caulking even though I put probably too much I'll throw some in here even though part of that's got white caulking in it who cares who cares And even if it gets on the back of these butterflies, it ain't going to matter because that's the back. It's hard to get it <laughs> because it's the, I don't want to get it all over the, hopefully I remembered to push in a little bit on these. I don't know if I did on the white ones. Oops. It's okay. It'll just show you what happens when you don't do that. <laughs> okay. Good enough. What I'm going to do is leave these overnight. And I'm just going to use this to fill in the back of this because I can. Because I want to see what it looks like when I do that. Um. Yeah. Overnight. And you want to clean your tool immediately. You do not want to let this sit on your tool. It will harden and it pretty much will become permanent. Um, and any of your surfaces that you're putting the caulk on, I would get yourself like a piece of glass that you don't care about. I wouldn't trust this sitting on your mat, even if your craft mat is nonstick, because it could be non-stick because it's silicone <laughs> and your mat could permanently you know have that on there so so what I'll do is because I don't have a lot of room in here is I'll pick this up and take it with me oh yeah I wanted to do um, a couple of these and show you that you can also do, you know put caulking in the little molds in these suckers and and these I like because they're a lot firmer so they're easier to work with and make little, you know, like instead of using clay, you can use the caulk. And of course, I'm going to set this down in a second. You can use um, this instead of the clay and make your little embellishments. And what's nice is they're flexible, unlike the clay, which is hard. So you can manipulate them a little bit. And you want to be careful with these because if you if you push like going like this you're likely going to dig into one of these so you want to make sure you're going completely flat across the whole thing because if you go like this you might dig into that flower and end up picking it up so when you put it you just want to go across the whole thing with your palette knife you're, you'll have a, a less harder time so that's done they go by pretty quickly. When you have the solid things like these leaves and the flowers and the butterflies or whatever, those are easier to paint afterwards than bothering to mix paint now. 
it's just easier to just because they're solid pieces they don't have a lot of detail for you to worry about getting in between little pieces like the lace the lace it might be easier to color it before forgot to mention that you want to leave them a full 24 hours because trust me if you think oh they must be dry because they're thin nope don't mess with them before 24 hours is up. If there's something I know something about, it's caulking. Whenever you have a shower caulked, they always tell you, don't use the shower for 24 hours. Unless it's, they have certain types of silicone caulks that will dry faster and you can use the shower before 24 hours, usually like eight hours. But with this stuff and with how we're putting it, and because the integrity of the piece depends on um, you know, depends on you not screwing with it. You definitely want to leave it for a full 24 hours. That's kind of important. Um, so don't get impatient. I should do this owl just because I can. Because it will rip a lot easier and likely rip right out of your mold and like especially if you're using like the lacy ones um it'll rip if you don't leave it for the full 24 hours and let it s like really cure it will rip guaranteed it'll rip. okay so everybody we're gonna leave these for 24 hours and we will be back to unveil them see you in a bit so we're back and it's been like three days and the reason why I left it that long is because whenever you're dealing with these type of molds where they're deeper you're going to want to leave them extra days I don't know if I mentioned that before you're not going to want to take them out after 24 hours you're going to want to let these sit for like two three days as long as it takes um and you'll know because if you pull away and you see that they're still if you go like that and you see that they're still sticking to the sides a bit and they're wet down there just leave it and it'll it'll be fine but you know to leave it for a few more days now once you get them and I'm going to start with these here once you get them what you want to do is take a baby wipe and wrap it around your hand and you want to carefully start wiping away at the little haze that that becomes on this um, it's like a, a film of the of the stuff which you could see clearly on this one um, it's that film and we're going to wipe away at it before you take it out of the mold because once you get it out of the mold you are not going to get that film off without a lot of really intricate cutting and it's going to frustrate you like crazy and yeah so you want to just carefully go in with a good medium firmness and you want to and this one didn't have it too bad because I actually started wiping it off camera and then was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I would like to do this on video. So I kind of did most of it then. But So there's that one. I'm going to wipe the film off of this one. So this one's got a little bit more on it. So I have to be a little bit firmer, especially around the edges. See how I'm cleaning it off? And you're going to have to switch fingers, you know, like move your finger around the baby wipe so that as after a while it starts to get gross like that. And you can like actually wear a hole in the baby wipe. So I usually go around the edge first and then I kind of do a circular motion on the inside with like medium to firm pressure being careful See, it's easier on the heart this one because it's not as flexible this one I had to be much more careful because it's flexible it like it doesn't I don't know I, I like the firmer silicone mold better than the super flexible ones they seem to be a lot easier for me to work with they're easier to fill with the caulking and they're easier to clean the film off with um, because you could be a little more firm with these because they won't mush and move and possibly lift your thing up um, getting another baby wipe so I definitely like the kind that are not the pink ones because apparently both of my pink ones are very flimsy and I don't like that. 
So if you're going to buy some, I would probably, unless you really like the pattern, stick to the ones that, I don't know if all pink ones are like that, but the, both the pink ones I got separately are like that. So I don't know. It's kind of, I mean, especially if you're going to buy them online. I see one possible trouble spot right here where I didn't get enough stuff and it might pull, um, it might rip, but that's okay. All right, let me do this one with the butterflies. Let me see. And even, even this one is not quite as flimsy as this one. Like this one's really flimsy and this one's not quite, you see how it's bouncing slower? Whereas this one's like really flippy floppy. I don't know, I'm being weird, right? Cause I'm like, this one's flimsier than this, but it really does make a difference, honestly. It makes a difference in filling them and it makes a difference in, in when you're cleaning them. You just want to make sure you get all of the film off. You're not going to hurt it like it wet, like being wet because obviously it's silicone. This stuff is the stuff that's in your showers and stuff. I'm trying to see if that's a film there or if that's part of the mold. I guess that's film. Yeah, you just want to make sure you get all of it because once you pull it out, if it's still got a film on it, you know, you're SOL at that point. And you want to get all the film from around the outside of that particular mold that you're using that you that you got here because if it's on the outer edge it'll still it'll still be connected to the butter you know to the whatever your thing is butterfly doily whatever so it's good to just clean the whole thing okay then I'm going to do the same thing on these even though these don't have usually as much of a film they could around the outside so basically I just want to clean up around the outside of the thing Now I seen somebody online um, on YouTube and she used a magic eraser. Do not, I repeat, do not use a magic eraser to clean the film off of the top of your doily. And this one ripped again. I think this one, this, this happened before and I think this one, I could see it's ripped. I think there is just such a tiny line in there that this one is kind of defective. It is too thin. I mean, I'm talking, it is a, it is a width of a hair connecting between that piece and that piece in there. It is literally the width of a hair. Like, I'm not exaggerating. So I think this one will never be able to have that center because this is the second time that that's happened and I didn't do anything to it. Anyway, like I was saying, do not use a magic eraser on your silicone molds and I'll tell you why. A baby wipe is just fine. Magic erasers are sandpaper. That is what makes them work. I know this. I've been cleaning houses forever and I use magic erasers. I know what they are. They are sandpaper. It's an extremely fine grit sandpaper. Okay. While it's safe on most things you use to clean your house, do not use it on silicone on your molds because eventually what happens is because it's silicone it's going to wear it away as you wear away silicone it's going to get pitted okay and it's going to rough it up and the film that you're trying to take off after a while is not going to come off because it's going to get stuck in where you have rubbed it with magic eraser so do not use a magic eraser at all and I wouldn't, don't use magic eraser on a lot of things other than like to clean something. But you know, there, you know, there are certain things you shouldn't use a magic eraser on just because eventually it will wear away at it. Now I use it on like, if somebody has a white painted shelf system, I can use it on that, but I don't go vigorously. Like if there's fingerprints or any kind of marks on it or whatever, I can use a magic eraser on painted surfaces, but you want to be careful with it you don't want to go crazy um it's meant for non-porous 
um, cleaning of like tubs, tiles, this, that, and the other. But this silicone, hold on. Come on, timer. Um, silicone, just don't use it on silicone, please. I promise you that after a while you're going to be pissed because it's going to ruin your, it's going to ruin it. Um, also she, you know, another lady had alcohol. I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, used alcohol. You don't want to use alcohol either. Um, I mean, it's not going to hurt, but you don't need to. A baby wipe will take the film off. I just showed you that. So you don't need anything other than a gentle baby wipe, or if you don't have baby wipes, a paper towel or a rag would be better than a paper towel because a paper towel will just disintegrate as you rub with it. Use a rag like an old t-shirt with a little bit of water on it. That's all you need. You don't need anything fancy. So anyway, okay, I'm going to show you what I mean about this. There's a, a section on this mold that has a literally, it's the size of a hair. And I've noticed this since I got it. And I never really used it because of that. And I wanted to use, you know, I used it well, I, I've used it, no, I ne actually never used this one. I've used this one, but I didn't use this one. And because I was concerned about that, but I thought maybe the caulking would work better than using it with modeling paste, but I am apparently wrong. And it's already ripping in a lot of places because this one is just too delicate and I just don't like this mold. So if you can avoid getting the soft, squishy kinds, squishy, don't get the squishy kinds because... That's about all I'm going to get out of this. And it is ripped in a few places like right here. But it'll still work if I put it down. And then this section is going to be completely separate. Which is fine. I could still put it down like this and glue it down. It's fine. But I really don't like this mold. Because look, look at the center. And you'll see how close together the silicone pieces are in the center. Like right here in this area around the, the circle. See how close together they are? There's no way you're getting anything in there without it breaking. You know, whether it's silicone or modeling paste or clay. I mean, it's not going to happen. Not even cake mix is going to come out of that. Because that's what these are for. These are for using for fondant and stuff. For, it's not going to happen in there. It's going to break every time. So this was a faulty one. And I can use it, obviously. Because look, if I'm just going to put this on paper then, you know, I don't need this stuck on. I can stick it on separately. It'll be fine. And you won't ever know the difference. This one comes out fine. But this one's kind of crap. I don't remember how much I paid for any for these two. But I know they were like $2 maybe. So I'm not worried about it. Now when you take it out, the best thing to do is bend the mold. Not pick it and pull it. Bend the mold and work it slowly all the way around the outside. And go all the way around the outside. And see, how that one ripped too. It's very hard. These are so delicate. And if you're not, like, super careful, they'll still be workable. But I need to get better molds is what it is. These molds were super cheap. So the cheaper the molds, probably the worse they are. But it'll still work fine. I want to get some of those sheets of lace they have. It's like a sheet and it's got like long strips of lace. That's what I really want. But this one will come out a lot better than the other one. It's just that these are not very expensive molds and they're kind of cheap. And so, you know. But considering, look at that. You won't notice it. it's ripped once it's down. And I really like that. So I am not that concerned that it ripped a little. My first one didn't rip. I don't know why this one did. But isn't that cool? I'm really frustrated right now because I just videoed all that. Me popping them all out. And my camera shut off. Because, yeah. I don't know what I got to. I don't know. All I'm, all I'm going to explain was this one was the only one that I couldn't pull out. Because it's very deep. And I had a feeling that was going to happen. It still needs time to cure. Because if it's really deep, it's going to take a while. Anyway, they all came out pretty good. The one that came out the worst, I think I mentioned this, is the flimsy floppy one. This center piece is never going to come out well. Um, but other than that, they all came out decent. They all look great. Um, I'm really pleased. They're going to be so much fun to use in projects. And I think you should give it a try. 
So make sure you like this video and that means give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Let me know in the comments if you think you're going to give this a try, if you've ever tried it, you know, if you have any kind of molds and what you want to, you know, if you can think of in your head like, oh, I've got a mold I want to try that on. Um, yeah, so just get yourself some caulking. Make sure it is not pure silicone. I can't stress that enough. You don't want pure silicone caulking. Um, you want to make sure it says silicone. It can have silicone in it, but make sure it's mostly acrylic um, caulking. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. Love you guys. Bye. Mwah.